Hello, people of the internet. Today, I have a 200BX, or 2 -imer, as it is in this particular case, which has a complete lack of seats and odd bits sticking out. That is because today's theme is pony cars, and we actually have a V8 in here. Maybe I can show it, just peeking in here. You'll see, though, that is not an inline 4. It is a V8. So, that is why... We are using this as a pony car, even if it isn't technically a pony car. I don't know what's causing the seat problem, but it shouldn't affect the functionality for the purposes of this video, so I'll go ahead with it anyway in 3, 2, 1, and a go. Yep, these are not cars I particularly like, but I think I could still pull a good time from it. It handles quite well compared to certain other 200BXs. It is a standard Moonhawk engine, that will no doubt help. It's the Type S as well, I've probably not mentioned that, or Type LS even in this case. It was only white that I used something with LS in its name for a V8 swap, even if the engine I'm swapping in isn't actually an LS. But anyway, we are going around here quite nicely. Surprising lack of oversteer, I say, as I get a crazy kick of all kinds of oversteer. And, well, it's going up very nicely indeed, actually. In being a bit careful with the power, I can't just floor it without any consequence. But I am getting across the terrain fairly nicely. It is still rear-wheel drive. It's a completely standard car other than the engine and the pair of exhaust coming out of the side, as you saw. So, that may play in its favour. I believe this also has a custom uh, suspension setup designed more for sports compared to other Ibishu 200BXs or 2 -imers. And, oh dear. Got a bit of a kick there. Thing is, the oversteer in a vehicle of this power level is controllable, unlike crazy high power versions. If it's had the same power as the ETK, I probably wouldn't be able to control it so well down here. But at this level, I definitely can. And I did see fire coming from the engine, but it seems to have gone now. It tends to be a characteristic of this V8. The V8 just being on fire. As long as the fire doesn't spread though, I should be okay. I just, I hope it doesn't spread because this thing feels like it may have a good capability along here. It should be tough enough over the hurtful sections and the power should be fairly solid overall and we're going too wide. Oh dear. I think as long as we've not lost a wheel or something stupid, no, we're fine. There may be some minor bodywork damage done somewhere in the process, but it looks like we've extinguished a fire, oddly. It's an odd powertrain, this, and despite the windscreen being cracked, I believe it is still a fully functioning car, so that's all good. I, I guess I got lucky in the way it flew off a cliff, if that's even such a thing. I was really concerned that I just managed to pull it back before the lumps hit it in the wall. My hope has kind of diminished now, <laughs> in myself and the car. I just really hope I don't make any more stupid, stupid mistakes, and can I somehow maintain control? Oh dear, flooring it now, and got round there quite nicely. Oh dear, pushing it to the edge, I really shouldn't be doing that. Can we break, 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 oh dear, that's a very odd line, but we are at least into the corner, fairly harm free. Fire is back again to say hello. I just really hope it doesn't do anything to my car because if it doesn't, then I could have a fairly happy two laps with this. But if it does, then it will not be a fairly happy two laps. It's not overheating or anything. It's working perfectly fine. I just don't know why it's setting on fire. It's like a poor project car, I guess, but Everything's working. It's not like I'm using a trashy vehicle. It, and it did this in the official config as well. Well, as official as you can get a mod config. So it's not just that I've completely messed something up with the cooling. I can get superchargers on this. I may do that someday. I can get superchargers and better radiators, which would always be handy to have around. 
in certain circumstances. But I decided for this I just wanted to get a good solid V8 200 VX or Tumor even done and dusted. So we've got that intake thingy at the front. There's not much I could do about that. In reality, you would probably just see it engineered out of the car. But there's no real way to do it in Beam without presumably doing some complex work on the car model. And I don't know how to do that. It would take too long to learn it, so I'm just leaving it be. It is struggling a little up this hill, but I think it's just the fact that I'm a rear-wheel drive car with um, a bit of a struggle there. Oh dear, I hit the wheels there. Yeah, as I was saying, it's a rear-wheel drive car without a huge amount of grip, so it would inevitably have a bit of struggle here. And I'm breaking, breaking, breaking into here. Can we save it? Can we save it? Powering out of there. Somehow I managed to just about recover the vehicle. Is this what happens when you over rev the engine? It just sets on fire? I don't know. There's just flames in my face. So I'm moving it forward a bit where the flames won't be so bad. Oh dear. Wobbly, wobbly. We're in third gear. We're going quite nicely along. Has the fire stopped? Oh dear, we've lost our tyres. We've lost our tyres, but we're going still. I'm not sure about the weird tyres. It's when they go, I'm really concerned. Front tyres can go. The way the 200BX slides, I can just slide it under power to get round corners if needs be. It's a very fiery vehicle, though. A fiery attitude towards pony cars is probably the way you to see it. It is getting through here. Oh dear, a bit bobbly. It's never going to be the most refined car. It is on sport suspension after all. And fire in our face again. But we are getting through. Oh dear, I want to keep the speed up because it's probably the only way we're going to pull through here. If we keep it low speed, it feels like it's going to get stuck. An odd thing to say, but that's what feels like is going on. It is a sports car. Again, it's got quite low suspension, quite low to the ground. That's not going to help if we don't have any speed when we scrape on the ground. And it probably will scrape on the ground at some point, if not now in the future. Anyway, across this, yes. That is an excellent line through there. Getting it into here. Really, really smooth, I'm noticing. If you get it right... Oh dear. It does feel less oversteery now. Problem is, chronic oversteer has been replaced with chronic understeer at a lot of time. Break into here and... We can get it out just fine. It's not really a hard car to drive. There's, there's just not much to say about it. It's a slightly oversteery... Japanese sports car which just happens to have an American V8 from an old muscle car. I've probably mentioned it is a Moonhawk engine in this at the moment. Oh dear. That slide was annoying but we are through. You'll see the wall of fire does keep appearing. It does affect my visibility. Why I don't want to be in the cabin though. I wonder how that looks. Uh, <laughs> that did not look healthy from the outside when I saw it. Just a ball of flames from behind the bonnet. But it is going, and I'm pretty sure we can get a lap. Oh dear. Our rear tyres are both gone. Oh, that does not feel good. Feels like we've lowered our ground clearance by doing that. I don't know. Can we get around still? Probably. But well, the fire is a bit more annoying than I would have expected, and it's not the problem I should be encountering, but a problem nonetheless. Now, oh dear, we're going a bit wide, but it, it held that line remarkably well. I thought it was going to just fly off the course, but it didn't. It kept holding on. And this is the lumpy section getting over and done with, I think, about this point. So it survived it. It survived it without any tyres, but that's mainly due to the fire, not due to the actual bumps. It is holding up quite well, and we can gain some speed. So, that's always a positive thing to begin with. 
Can we resume? I think so. I'm keeping it in third. He's got a good amount of torque. That's always going to help. When you do get it sliding, you're able to counter steer it quite well using that torque. Maybe that's why it doesn't feel quite as much a handful as it could feel. Maybe the original inline four just never had the torque to do that. Although, it is kind of a drift chassis, so you'd think you'd need it. At least in the higher trims. It's, I don't know, I feel that's where the 200BX has been messed up. Because it's too far a drift car. You should be able to tune these for grip if you want. But it feels like, from standard, it's just too far a drift car. Although, having said that... It's far less menacing than I ever remember a 200BX being. It actually drives quite nicely. By no means as nice as the ETK, but it doesn't handle badly at all. And as long as you keep the power to something reasonable, like the 200 and something horsepower this engine is capable of, it shouldn't give you too much of a hard time. Oh no. Come on, you're light enough to make it up this hill and you have a decent amount of power. All right. So, I've got a plan. I'm going to try and get a one-up. Can we get into reverse? Yeah, we can. Being a bit funny about it, but it did eventually let me. It's just a huge ball of fire. I'll try using the exterior camera to get up this hill. One last chance. If it's... Certain, if I'm certain that it can't get up, I'll just give up on it and no, I need to go to the front camera because that is really getting in my way. Second gear. And this is the biggest fireball we've had, but it, will it be able to somehow claw its way up the hill? So close, but I don't think it has what it takes. So I'm going to stick the handbrake on. Stick it back to neutral. Oh dear, and I want to leave it here, but it seems too eager to slide down the hill unless I use my regular brakes as well. Still, can we get on there? No, it just wants to move and the handbrake comes off. There we go, finally. Yeah, ultimately partly destroyed by the fireball, I think, destroying the tyre grip. Partly destroyed by just not having the grunt to get up the hill. Not what I expected to be a problem. Being a relatively powerful sports car that doesn't weigh a stupid amount, I didn't think it would have any standout reason not to make the hill, but as it appears, it does. Still, forever, forever now on, this shall be called the Box of Fire. So if I turn my lights on, they still work. All the lights still work. All the car still works. It's just... Unable to make it up the hill. It's quite a shame, really. But anyway, on to the next vehicle. Okay, so here we have the Brucal Le Grand National, as I've called it. It's as close as I could build to a Grand National, basically. It's got a variable boost supercharger making more or less 277 horsepower. And... It's got rear wheel drive and heavy duty rear suspension and sport front suspension. It seemed to work out quite well overall, so I decided to settle with it. It's a 3.8 inch, inch <laughs> liter engine anyway, might I mention. Get used to display sizes and then I have to describe an engine and it completely messes up my mind. Anyway, you'll see inside it's a fairly regular Legrand, basically designed in a similar manner to the boot GNX from the 1980s. But anyway, with that said, I've got to launch it in three, two, one, and a go. Also, I'll mention now, this has supposedly got 66,000 miles on the clock. For an age of car that this is, that's not too bad. It is a fairly old vehicle. It was front wheel drive, and I did have a front wheel drive one of these down before, but this time it's been very rear wheel drive converted, and it is now a turbocharged car, instead of twin turbo, I believe it's a single turbo, 
there's not that many differences other than the way we'll drive, to be honest. The tyres as well, I, I struggled to find some that fit in the body and didn't look stupid while also being relatively wide. It's got 245s all around. Again, it's similar to a Buick GNX. It's designed to be a replica of that car, pretty much, in BMNG. So... It has a lot of features. That had 255 wheel, but I just settled with the closest I could get to it, realistically. And it worked. It, it handles reasonably well. For something I just threw together with what parts I had available to me, it's not bad. And I've not mentioned yet, I managed not to mention it, but it has got a four-speed automatic transmission. The Buick had that, oddly. You'd think they'd go for a manual, but they didn't. They went for an automatic, so that's what we've got. I'd like a manual, it would definitely be more fun with a manual, but as I say, it's basically a GNX replica, and oh, kick up overs there. It was, it's basically a GNX replica, so I had to follow that car. And we are managing to hold this together, although I have no doubt that front wheel drive was just better. It was nicer to drive, however, in terms of ruggedness, this may cope a little better. Although, the front wheel axles, I did manage to break them once, so it gives me the idea they're no stronger. They will still break on the lumpy section, but we're not putting power down to them, so maybe that will still not hurt us too badly. Refinement is okay, although as I say, it is sport suspension on the front and heavy duty on the way. It's just not designed for a rally stage, but I'm taking it over on anyway. In, and it's ultimately 80s technology, it's not a modern car. Having said that, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. The 200BX was not a nicer car, mainly because it was on fire, I will admit. But also, I think visibility is slightly better in this, and you sit slightly higher up, which does help you on a rally stage like this. Which is odd, because normally you say that when you're going forward in time about modern cars being all tall and low cars being the older ones, and... It's odd to see the reverse of that happening, where the older car eats the taller car, with the benefits and drawbacks of being a tall, taller vehicle. I can speak, and... I am, as I say, picking up speed. There's not much to do with gearing. I'm, I'll admit it's helping me. It makes driving this thing less of a challenge. You'll see the wear is getting a bit squirrely at times, but it's less of a... Difficulty because of that transmission. Problem is the transmission just it doesn't quite know what to do with this power The original car it came with Was the Front-wheel drive version of this I would say it had a turbo and about 230 horsepower going to the front wheels This is just a rear-wheel drive equivalent of that transmission and it's expected to deal with however much more power it's got so 47 ish horsepower more and it doesn't quite know what to do when it's forced with that much power going through the wrong set of wheels. I can't really blame it, but I would like to see it put the power down better. And here we can see the true pony car grunt, though. It's not a V8, as a pony car would typically be, but then neither was a GNX. And that turned out to be one of the most powerful American muscle cars of its era. Or maybe one of the most powerful American cars of the 80s full stop. So, you know, you can't really complain how it makes the power. It's doing a good job of it. And we're going wide here, but it's just about holding on. I know this can make a lap now. Just, just driving it, I know it can make a lap. However, in what state? We've got enough power and we've got a low enough weight to achieve pretty much any kind of hill climbing we need to. Grip isn't too bad either. I believe these tyres are wider than the 200BX, although the vehicle is most likely heavier and oh dear. Ah, uh, this is the part it's likely to fail. I almost threw it too far then, but I managed to recover it. And can we... Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Thankfully that took the heavy duty wear axle. The wear axle I don't mind knocking about as much as the front because I think it can take things. Maybe I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure it can take a bit more abuse than the front axles can. 
Remember, the front axles don't have power going to them, though, so it's a completely different driving experience, and it's under, I would say, slightly different stresses as well in the way it deals with the power and in the way it tries to attack bums. For example, in a rear-wheel drive car, you're much more likely to do wheelies. In a front-wheel drive car, doing wheelies, it would be very strange indeed. You'd have to have a pretty messed up setup and even then it would be nigh on impossible to get wheelies out of a front wheel drive car although i wouldn't say this is a wheelie machine it is more likely to lift the front wheels up just a little than the front wheel drive equivalent and can we make it around this corner also there were these wheels in a different color if you don't like the chrome ones it is possible to build it with a different colour of wheels. These are some gavel wheels, which I know I probably shouldn't be doing because it's one of those things that drives people mad. Gavel wheels on a brew call. Who am I kidding? But it works visually, so that's what was partly important to me, that it worked well enough visually and just didn't look excessively stupid while still fitting relatively wide tyres. 245s, as I say. I thought, honestly, I wouldn't get this. I thought I'd be restricted to 215s or something just because of how stupid they would look, or I'd have to make it look stupid in order to fit the wider tyres. The track width as well, I'll mention that now, that is as narrow as it'll go. <laughs> Trying to fit the widest tyres on as possible without them sticking out the bodywork massively. Although, they still do somewhat stick out the bodywork, and it feels like it's pulling ever so slightly to the left. I could be imagining it, though, because there's a lot of bumps around, but it's still cornering fine. There's no major problems at this point. If anything, it's just struggling to put the power down through the wheel of the car. We've got all our tyres, which is progress on the 200BX, which I think by this point had lost all its tyres. Or, if not by this point, by a slightly later point in the course. And it is definitely pulling to the left, but we're... Still getting around corners. That was an odd way to take that corner, but I'm not complaining because we've done it now. And this corner, slow it down a little. Probably slowed it down too much, to be entirely honest. But we can get around here. Very nicely held into there. And we can hopefully speedy along. Yeah. As I say, this transmission just does not feel cut out to it. I have no idea what gear I'm in now, but there's only four available to begin with. Oof. I would say it should be a five speed, but then the gearbox is what the gearbox is. So I couldn't adjust it. And I honestly wouldn't want to adjust it because it would involve a lot of looking up the GNX gear ratios and for what? Probably quite minor time differences. I'm unable to use all the power anyway, so even if a transmission worked, what difference would it make? Ooh. I was just sliding them out all then. I just got lucky that it didn't hurt me too much, and that was a very horrible line coming into here, but as I say, we'll have no problem scaling hills, so it doesn't matter too much if I take a terrible line. Now, oh dear, I don't want to push it off the edge of a cliff. <laughs> that would always be convenient, although it doesn't feel like it's going off the edge of a cliff. Which is amazing with my kind of driving. I guess it's just not snappy. It will get a bit slidey, but it likes to slide. It's just the nature of a vehicle. It's not going to slide to spite you. Oh dear. Just as I say no problem scaling hills, we run into a problem scaling hills. I feel like, I, I'd like to at least feel like I can make this. Maybe it can't. Although there is a lot of power here. And as I say, the transmission is trash, so the transmission would not be on my side. I want to do a second lap with this, I really do, but with it pulling to the left as it is, although it's not race ending, there's definitely something wrong with it, definitely something going on that shouldn't be. And can we, no, again, I just, I was pushing it there, and I ended up with a different kind of problem. One more try to get it up here. And I think I'll try and keep it lower in the rev range for a slight change. I really want to. I really want to make a lap in this, though. Yeah, I, it was strange that with my mind, though. Just then, I was like, "Wait, I actually have to shift into reverse manually because I'm used to a machine doing everything for me." 
Yes, there we go. Oh, it shifted up and then it shifted right down again. No. Oddly. Yeah, it's going to sound ridiculous, but I think the 200BX made it further up the hill. Stick into neutral then, and hopefully I can find somewhere to park. This seems like a reasonable enough place. Ugh, that's an odd camera angle. And there we'll go. Ooh. That front right is not healthy. It's still turning just fine, but it just doesn't look healthy. But as I say, we have made it further than the other Liguan, so that's progress for front wheel drive, but even in the base model Liguan, I got stuck about the same point. But this is a far more modified vehicle for even muscle carring purposes, so, you know, it's odd that I still can't push the Liguan further than that hill, almost like there's some hidden limit to the vehicle that I don't quite realise. And I will mention as well, when I did some testing, the D-Series had the exact same problem. It could just be that this is too firm on the rear, but as I said, that's how I got it to handle the power, so that's why and how it ended up with a firm rear end. And even then, you'll see it's a Liguan, so nothing is particularly firm on it. I can hopefully show you the engine. It'll be a transverse rear driver, which is a very odd way of doing things, but that's the way it is. And it looks like they've got some turbo stuff on, which is interesting. That stuff normally isn't modelled. Still, there's our engine. Is it even longitudinal? No, it's not. Transverse, definitely. But anyway, with this said, all my headlights were, again, fully working vehicle. Conquered by the Great Hill, but on to the next vehicle. And here we have the final vehicle of today, the Barstow White Snake, which, if you may have noticed, appears to have the exact same wheels as the Liguan. Maybe they're slightly different models, maybe they're slightly wider models, but they do look like the exact same wheels, which is all the more interesting. Also, fancy headlights, yay! I do like some fancy headlights on my cars. Anyway, it is a convertible as well. This is the White Snake variant of the Barstow, and it should be very quick. I've not checked the statistics, but we do have a manual transmission. Ooh, all the lovely gears. So, we have a manual transmission and brutal power. This being the quickest convertible, Barstow, by the way, with no wall cage, because I do value my safety. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure this will make it up the hill. But we'll have to see anyway, so let's go in three, two, one, and a go. Now the problem with the bars though is the drive shafts, they are incredibly flimsy. They must be made of paper, really, or something, because they do not hold up incredibly well <laughs> to getting chucked about. Hopefully it won't be a problem. This track, I would say, isn't a torture test, but we've just seen what it did to the two cars that came before. It did do some damage to them, especially the Liguan where it broke the front wheel axles. Poor little Liguan, it was never meant to be a rear-wheel drive muscle car, <laughs> or pony car as it is. But anyway, this is hopefully going to do well. This is, comparatively to the other two, a real muscle car, I guess you could say. It's just from that era, and it's more of a car, more of a bigger car, whereas the other two were really just economy cars, or kind of economy sports cars, dressed up as something to be more than they are. And I say that, oh dear. And this you couldn't really describe as an economy car, because it's not economical, really. It's from a day when economy didn't matter too much. So, as long as it worked, and it did good things, that was important. We are very smooth here as well. I'm loving this old muscle car suspension. Although it is lowered, it's fairly smooth here over the bumps. And uh, the convertibleness is probably helping with that too, being a very flimsy vehicle. And this is it's actually handled a lot like the Liguan, only with more grip, despite presumably having a lot more power. Although I don't know. Power on the graph, it looks quite similar. Oh dear. 
yeah, I think this is slightly more powerful than the Liguan, only it makes its power in a different way. It makes it with an old American V8 as opposed to making it with a turbocharged V6. Different ways, but ultimately what does it matter when you're enjoying some good classic American vehicles? I would, just for the weirdness factor, I would take the Liguan over this, but in all honesty, this is the nicer car. It's just got wood, yeah. It's got wood, it's got a bit more chrome on it, and it just looks cooler, I think, personally. But then the market value would more likely reflect that, so you get what you pay for, I guess. I'm pretty sure this will make it up the hill. The manual transmission, if nothing else, is definitely a massive help, and I won't have punctured tyres, so it's immediately got its own advantages over the other two vehicles I've had today. I say it won't have punctured tyres, the horrible section could always do some damage to the tyres, but it's unlikely to completely puncture them, I think. In this case, we don't have any particular reason for them to get punctured, and the Liguani didn't, so... I should be okay. Ooh. I have to be careful with applying the power here. It can be a bit of a handful as I'm going up a banking there. And it can be a bit of a handful, but it will ultimately level out if you're careful and achieve decent pace. Oh dear. That is a very odd line that I would rather not take, but we are through the corner at least. Ah, uh, slide. Thankfully that slide was in the correct direction. And I'm not liking where I'm throwing this now. <laughs> the engine's just bobbling about. Thankfully I think it's supposed to. I think it's not been knocked loose or anything. If it is knocked loose, the drive shaft will be the first to tell me about it because it's a very um, significant part, yet yeah, a very weak part. They do not like to do their job. Yeah, it, it, the drive shaft probably goes on strike at first sign of a bump that he doesn't like. Anyway, we are we are going through the course. I've not thrown it off a cliff yet. And I probably shouldn't say I've not thrown it off a cliff yet. But, you know, things are going fine. Oh dear. I, I feel like this is going to go okay. It's not the going to be the best lap in the world. But I feel it'll be okay. Whoa. Yeah, this this is maybe a bit more effortful than the Liguan to get up here. That leaves me concerned. Leaves me seriously concerned. But I don't know. Both of them were pretty slidey. Both of them were slidier than they really should be. And both of them were fine, mainly, until the bit where we got to that major hill and... They struggled. Mind, the Liguan did have some steering damage, which, although wasn't making it completely undrivable, it was a slight annoyance. I'm not sure about this. It was designed as a solid old American front engine rear drive muscle car, so it's hard to say how it will perform. Can we? Yes, floor it. Oh no. Should not have done that. I never learn. Seriously. I think I know where the road is. There we go. I've kind of found the road. And gone back onto it. Kind of. Yay, we're at the horrible section. Oh dear. Had a similar escape to the Liguan there. Oh dear. I can really feel the lumps though. I think the Liguan was a little nicer over the bumps. That much must be said. But we are, we are getting through. I have no idea what state this car is in, but the drive shaft is okay, that's the most important thing at this stage in time. Oh dear. Power, oh, bobble, 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 bobble. On the brakes. And I'm in the grass, playing, uh, Come on, back onto the road with you. Oh fine, we'll go in the grass. <laughs> playing the long grass. Fine, we'll get attacked by wild Pokemon, what does it matter? We're in a muscle car. Wee bomb. Oof. Something tells me this isn't quite liking this terrain. The bonnet is not the same shape it was when we began. 
it's, it's largely holding together though. The drive shaft has not snapped off on an awkward bump, rock or something, so we're fine in that respect. And oh dear, I did not like that. But we're through. We will fly across the course. Oh no, I don't know how to drive apparently. Brake, brake. I feared I was flying off the course there. Thankfully, brakes are slightly better than that. And, oh dear. Slight bump there. I think I did the same thing in the Le Grand, but the Le Grand took it better, yeah. I'm pretty sure this must just be heavier than the Le Grand or something like that, or at least it must have less weight over the rear, because the Le Grand was handling better over the worst kind of grip areas, but the Grand just had that bit of rear grip, maybe I can get by, but maybe I can get by with this, but my expectations are not the highest for getting up that hill, oh dear. Yeah, I think this is the same tyres as the Le Grand, just this vehicle doesn't quite handle as nicely. I did not think I would say that about a rear wheel drive converted Le Grand, but an actual muscle car just doesn't handle as well as it. I don't know, maybe it's like it's a smaller car and smaller cars generally handle better. I, I'm at this point not certain at all. Perhaps I burst one of my weird tyres and I didn't notice, meaning that would give me far less weird grip, but I think I'd really notice it if that was the case and going a bit on edge there, but we pull it back on the road and be fine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Gently through here. Yeah, my driver's not having a comfortable day. <laughs> Just another day in the office for him. W rattling around in an old muzzle car. Ooh. I feared I was closer to the edge there than I actually was. Thankfully, I was not. Oh dear. You'll see here I'm really struggling, though, to keep this thing under control. Something is not right. But I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's just all the lumps and bumps on the course. But it, it, it's really hard to say what specifically is going wrong. Because I can't see it. Other than bodywork damage, though, there's nothing I could see that would damage the overall status of a vehicle. I guess the rear wheels could be bent. That would really affect the rear grip in the wrong ways. Oh, come on. Down here. Oh, yes. Speed. Oh, break, break, break. No. <laughs> We managed to keep that, somehow. Somehow, thank you gods of beam for giving me one last chance to probably mess it up. It's just driving this thing, it, I feel always on edge. I feel like it wants to attack me at any given moment. And that is a steep hill and I'm pretty sure by this stage I won't make it. I, I could be wrong and I really hope I am, believe me. But... I suspect I'm not. Yeah. There's no way I'm making it up that hill. Because when I, if I do even get near to making it up, it'll just spin. There just isn't the way and gripping this thing. It's a sad failure. It's an episode of failures. All three pony cars have been beaten by a hill. Really? They held up along the cores as well. And it looks odd. Maybe it was this low from standard, I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if the suspension has gone. And is that tyre punctured? I don't think it is. But I could be wrong on the front. Yeah, I think it's just an oversteery car with broken rear suspension. That was ultimately what was wrong with it. Let's hopefully see the engine to end on a slightly more positive note. And do our lights still work? Come on. Yeah, there we go. Just trying to mess with the wrong keys. Tear that off. There we go. Ooh, he's got a supercharger. Apparently it has 450 horsepower. That would explain it. Although I didn't seem to notice that much. Maybe I was looking at the non-forced induction screen. I don't know, maybe I'll have to try a rally version of this car, because I'm sure it could do incredibly well. Same with the Ligue 1, if it's actually modified for this purpose with the right kind of tyres, 
maybe right kind of suspension for the job, it could do incredibly well. But in their current state, they really are track vehicles and they should just be left as track vehicles. So I'm going to leave it here for today and say goodbye until another day. Also, my bits of bodywork are collecting down there.